Great to have you once again on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's go back a little bit um, in history. I'm going, oh, first of all, starting with 1970, where on this day, on the 26th of August, there were, uh, was the Women's Strike for Equality. Um, it was uh, described as the 15th, 15th anniversary of American women being able to vote, and it was marked by a nationwide women's strike for equality. The strike was, um, you know, uh, celebrated the 50th anniversary of the passing of what was called the 19th Amendment, which effectively gave American women the right to vote. The rally was sponsored by the National Organization for Women, NOW, and about 50,000 women gathered for the protest in New York City and even more throughout the country. At this time, the gathering was the largest on behalf of women in the United States, and the strike also advocated uh, for uh, other second-wave feminist goals more generally, such as, of course, po political rights for women, social equality in relationships such as marriage, and a couple of other things. It also received extensive local and national attention, both positive and negative. The significance really was to express, you know, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, vast uh, requirements and demands that uh, women across America still needed at this time in 1970. We obviously can see that things have changed and things have improved over time. Uh, there is now, you know, wider space and more accommodating space for women. There still are demands, you know, and of course I would mention that there still are demands for equality in different levels, equity, you know, a safer space for women, more opportunities for women and some of all of that. But it's definitely a much better place than it was in the 60s and, you know, prior to this day and of course in the 70s. Okay, next story in uh, history for today, we're going to the year 2015, which was just a couple of years ago, in Nigeria, in Niger State, where 14 people died in a boat mishap. Uh, it's, you know, something that has happened a couple more times, you know, over, you know, the uh, course of the last few years. Uh, we've seen in Bainue State, we've seen, you know, in a couple of, you know, of other states across the country. But 14 persons, including 11 women from the same family, listen to that, perished in a boat mishap in the river Sarkin Power in uh, Niger State. The women and two men who had gone to the farm to harvest groundnuts and the only survivors were the two men. Really sad. Eyewitnesses told uh, the newspapers then that the villagers were returning from the farm when the boat mishap uh, occurred. The senator representing Niger East, Senator David Umaru, in a condolence message described the incident as shocking and unfortunate and, of course, lamented the lack of roads and bridges in the area. Um, another, well, a really, really sad story here, you know, and, you know, this really should be enough and incidents like this should be enough to push for better development to some of these areas to reduce the risk that people need to take in order to get to their farms and get to their business places in many many places across nigeria and we hope that you know you know lessons are learned from some of these tra tragic incidents and we hope that people who represent these areas both at the local and the state level and um, you know of course the nigerian government in, in itself is able to do what is necessary to ensure that there is a safer environment for these residents Residents. Now we're talking security, and I'm hoping once again that we're learning the mistakes that we're currently making with regards to protecting Nigerian lives and property. But on this day in history, 14 people died in Niger State in a boat mishap in 2015. And in 1970, there was a strike, uh, uh, you know, to, of course, uh, protest uh, the uh, 15th anniversary of the rights of women to vote in the United States of America. Stay with us. Uh, of course, uh, we are moving into our next conversation right now. We have uh, joining us Professor Emeka Ozoji. He's a director, Center for Nomadic Education in the University of Joss. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, uh, Professor Ozoji. All right, we'll reconnect with him after this very short break here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.